Okay, this uh, video is going to cover um, chapter um, chapter 10 of uh, Groundwork for a Better Vocabulary. Um, if you want to go ahead and get your book open to follow along, you'll be able to answer some of the questions in there as we go through the PowerPoint. And it should also help you, um, if you haven't done the online activities already, um, the, uh, we'll, the answers that we go through here should help you do well on the online activities. Okay, so let me just read through these uh, words, and we'll take some guesses at the uh, parts of speech. So we have accustomed, um, anticipate, that's the eight sound again at the end of the word, linger. We have miserable, we talked briefly in class about the ubble, what does ubble mean? Misinterpret, so we had the word interpret before, now we have miss in front of that, occur, particular, reluctant, revise, and here we have version, which ends um, in S-I-O-N, which should give you some clue. All right, so the first one here is a custom, um, and this one is an adjective. Although my grandfather was accustomed to sucking a sugar cube while he drank tea, the sugar never seemed to harm his teeth. After years of living in sunny Puerto Rico, Alma had difficult, uh, had sorry, had trouble becoming accustomed to the snowy Minnesota weather. So in this case, um, accustomed means used to. Um, so uh, one of the things, one of the things uh, to keep in mind, if we look at this word, in the middle of the word, we should see a word that we're familiar with. And what I'm talking about there is the word custom. Now, we already had the word customary, and we said customary means normal, right? Normal for a particular situation. Well, what a custom means is that it means that something becomes normal for you, um, that something becomes not unusual for you. Um, so uh, um, in, in, the first in the first example, I don't think that's the greatest example, but if we look at the second example, this one may be um, something that is familiar with you guys, is that if you come from a country where there isn't a lot of snow um, and it isn't cold, it can be very difficult to become accustomed to um, the snowy and cold weather. Um, it's difficult to become accustomed to driving uh, in it. It's difficult to get to a situation where... where um, where um, the snow is normal for you. So a custom means that it, it becomes normal. Uh, it, it becomes normal. Something becomes normal for you. The one thing to keep in mind on there is that uh, if we look at accustomed, um, what word do you see that follows it? And you should see that two follows it in there. Um, so uh, that's a good clue for, uh, for the quiz. All right, so here's our next one is anticipate, uh, and it's got that eight sound again at the end, and so this one's a verb. So Lee anticipated heavy traffic this morning, so he left for work an hour early. Because we anticipated a snowstorm, we bought extra groceries in case we couldn't get to the store for a few days. So anticipate means uh, to think likely to happen. Really what anticipate means is that you're making a guess about what is going to happen in the future. And it could be the near future, like right, you know, right, right what's going to happen to, uh, happen to you soon. So, for example, if you're um, driving on the, the road, this has happened to me before. Um, if you see someone in front of you who's, who looks like they're on their phone <laughs> and they're not driving forward, you may anticipate that they're going to do something wrong, and so you back up and you give more more space. Um, but anticipate can also be for the 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 um, uh, the future that's a little bit more far away. So in the first one, he's anticipating heavy, heavy track traffic. So if you think that there's going to be a lot of traffic um, on the road, um, it means that you're guessing as to what will happen. Um, in in the future, another way to think about this is you know it's like predicting, um, but normally it means that you're predicting and then as a result, um, you take a certain action, 
um, uh, because something's going to happen. So in the first example we see there, he anticipates the heavy traffic so that as a result, he, he left early. So for example, if you anticipated it, that it was going to rain, uh, you'd probably bring an umbrella, right? So anticipate means that you're predicting something that is going to happen, but also that you're going to do something um, as a result of the prediction. Okay, moving along to the next one. Here's linger, and this one's also a verb. So, my father had, has difficulty leaving a, any social event. He likes to linger by the door, chatting on and on with our hosts. After the bowling matches are over, we usually linger for a while uh, to talk to our friends on the other teams. So, linger means to stay or to remain. Linger really means to stay longer than what is necessary, um, typically because of a reluctance to leave. So what does that mean? Well, in the first example, it, it says my father, my father lingers by the door, meaning that the, the party is over, but he doesn't want to leave um, because he enjoys chatting. Um, I don't know if you guys had this experience, but I always had this experience with my parents. Um, you know, you'd be pulling on their arm saying, I want to go, I don't want to go, but they wanted to stay, stay on um, to talk. So really, linger means to stay, but it means to, to stay longer than you need to stay, longer than you have to stay, um, because, you, because, you don't, because you're not ready to leave. Even though the event is over, even though the thing is over, you're not ready to leave. So, for example, some students will linger behind after class, you know, either they're talking with their classmates, classmates, even though class is over and they can go, they still want to talk with their classmates um, or they want to stay behind and talk to the professor um, for, for some reason. Um, but the class is over, so they don't need to stay, but for some reason they want to stay or they're not ready, uh, they're not ready to leave. Okay, moving on to the next one. Um, here's uh, miserable. And this one has the A-B-L-E ending, and this makes it an adjective. Um, the ferals were miserable on their camping trip because the green flies wouldn't stop biting them. Gino is sure to be miserable during the allergy season if he doesn't get shot. shot not shot, shots. Miserable means very uncomfortable. Uncom now, you may or may not the, know the word that this comes from, but there's a word called misery. And misery means uh, like a, a horrible, horrible feeling. Uh, lots of pain, either physical or emotional pain. Um, but when we say miserable, it really is important that it's not just uncomfortable, that it's very uncomfortable. Um, another definition would be, you know, extremely unhappy um, or uncomfortable. Um, so in the first example, right, if you go out camping and there's flies, there are mosquitoes that are always biting you, right, you're going to be miserable because you're in a situation where you can't change the situation and you have to endure, if we go back to um, a, um, a previous vocabulary word, you have to endure something that is very, very unpleasant. Um, uh, in the case if it, this this person who has allergies, if he doesn't get the shots, he'll be miserable. So those of you guys who have allergies, you know, like, um, you know, maybe when you're around cats or during um, here in the United States during the spring, there's a lot of um, uh, plants that come up during the spring that make people have really runny noses and make them have headaches and feel tired. Um, but during that time, you can feel really, really miserable. Um, another time you'd feel miserable is if you have a really bad cold. Um, uh, you feel miserable. You also might feel miserable like if you're a big sports fan and you want your team to win, but they lose, uh, a real, they, they lose you might feel uh, miserable. You feel like really, really unhappy. So it can be unhappy or also um, physically uncomfortable. All right, so moving on to the next one. This is misinterpret. So this is also a verb. We had interpret before, um, and this one is, which was a verb, and this one is also a verb. So it's clear that Jay misinterpreted his wife's request. He brought her flowers for a vase instead of flour for a cake. 
Um, tomorrow, each of you should bring in one interesting fact about Greece, the teacher said. One student misinterpreted her instructions and complained, but I can't think of anything interesting about Greece. So in, in this case, the first Greece is the country, and the second Greece is, you know, what you have, uh, what you use for cooking. So this one it means, uh, uh, misinterpret means to understand um, something incorrectly. So misinterpret, interpret means to get the meaning of something. Miss means uh, a mistake or incorrect. So misinterpret means that you, uh, you get the wrong meaning of something or you understand something incorrectly or you explain something incorrectly. Um, uh, so, so misinterpret is really the opposite of, of interpret. Okay, so moving on to the next one, we have here occur. And occur is also a verb. Um, a robbery occurred at the restaurant just minutes after we left. The first moonwalk occurred on July 20th, 1969, after Neil Armstrong stepped on the moon and said, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. What occur means is to happen. Okay. Another way to say is that this uh, is um, to take pl to take place. Um, so in the first example, a robbery occurred at the the restaurant just minutes before we um, left. It means that that's the time that it happened. Okay. Um, in the second one, it it occurred on July twentieth. Um, uh, that's the time that the event happened or the event um, took place. Now, there's another meaning for occur, but it's not the meaning that we're studying here. But you may have heard of, um, like, an idea occurred to me. And what that means in that situation, it means that you suddenly thought of something. So you, when you hear this word occur, you may hear it used in a way where it doesn't mean to, to happen, but it means to have an idea. Um, but again, that's not what we're testing in this, uh, in this class. All right, so our next one here is um, particular. Um, particular is an adjective. Uh, the, the girl I babysit for has dozens of games and toys, but she insists on playing one particular game over and over. Richie didn't care where he and Elsa ate dinner, but she had a particular restaurant in mind, the Mes Mexican restaurant on Fifth, and, um, on Fifth Street. So in this one, particular means special, or I would actually use the word specific, because um, special has the sense of meaning of that something is um, a very good or unique or better for some reason. But particular really means that um, it's some specific one uh, from, from a group. Um, so another way to think about it is this is used to sig single out an individual member of a spe specified group or class. Um, so in the first one, it says there is a particular game, right? There's one, one game, one specific game out of the group of games. There's one specific one that she liked. Um, in the second one, uh, there was one particular restaurant. So of all the restaurants in in the the town, there's one specific one um, that they were that they were um, that she was interested in that she wanted to eat at. Okay. Um, so moving on to the next one. This is reluctant. Reluctant is also an adjective. Uh, since we're reluctant to have people know our phone number, we keep it unlisted. Okay. Unlisted means that it's not in the phone book or it's not on the internet. Um, and if you call someone, it just says no number. Although the lawyer was reluctant to tell his client disappointing news, he had no choice but to do so. What reluctant means here is unwilling. Okay. So one thing to pay, my, uh, pay attention to here is that it will notice that after all reluctant, um, the word to is there. And then a verb, so reluctant to have, uh, reluctant to tell. So reluctant really means that you, that you, um, you, you don't want to do something. Um, but it really means, um, 
It doesn't mean necessarily that you won't do it, but it, it sort of has the meaning of like you would prefer not to do it and you're hesitating um, to, to do it uh, or you're unenthusiastic um, about doing it. Um, sometimes you may be reluctant to do something, but you do it, you do it already uh, you, or you have to do it. So, for example, one of the things that I've noticed in, um, in teaching is that the students who are reluctant to talk in class are the students who sit in the back of the class. Not all the time, but a lot of the time. The students who, who are reluctant to talk in class, they sit in the back of the class trying, <laughs> looks like they're trying to hide from the teacher because they don't want to participate or they don't want to be called on. Um, is that but but that doesn't mean that they won't speak when they're asked to speak reluctant means you just don't really want to um, so another way to think about this you know a, a person who is reluctant um, may be shy about doing some specific thing um, because they don't because they don't enjoy doing that thing or they're worried about doing that thing wrong or for some reason they they just don't they just don't want to do it all right, so moving on um, to our next word. This one's revise, and this is um, a verb. <clears throat> Don't just write a paper once and hand it in. It's important to revise what you write until your paper is in good shape. Recent price increases for lumber have made it necessary for carpenters to revise their construction charges. So revise means to make changes in, but it means make changes in to make it better. Either physically, you know, like in the example of a, a paper, when you revise it, you, you make changes so that it's clearer. But revise can also mean, in the second example, you have to change it so that it's more appropriate for the situation. So it's saying that the prices of lumber, which means wood, um, have, ch have, uh, have changed. They've, they've gone up. So they have to revise the, the amount that they're charging you, right? They have to actually charge you more so that it's an appropriate cost. Um, it's not going to be better for you if you're paying for it, but, um, it has to be um, better for them. Um, so revise really means to, um, to alter something, which means to change something in light of further evidence. Okay, well, what does that mean? It means that you're given, if you look at the picture there, um, uh, well, that, that's not the greatest example, but um, if uh, uh, one of the things that you guys uh, have to do in your writing classes is that the teacher will give you a, you'll turn in a paper to the teacher and the teacher will make corrections on it. Now you're given, now you've just been given evidence that there's something wrong with your paper. So you revise it, so you make it better. So revise really means not that you just, you, we wouldn't say I revise my clothes, right? I change my clothes, right? You change your clothes every day. But we wouldn't really say revise because you're not making it better because of, uh, of, um, because of evidence, because of some new information that tells you that there's something wrong with it. Okay, so our last one here, we're pushing 20 minutes. We're getting close to 20 minutes, so we'll wrap this up. Um, this one is version, and this is a noun. The S-I-O-N should clue us into that this is a noun. The play West Side Story is a modern musical version of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. There have been at least six movies about Frankenstein's monster, but the best is still the 1931 version starring Boris Karloff. So what version means is a retelling. Well, what does this mean? Um, it means that it's, it's a particular form of something differing in certain respects from an earlier form or other forms of the same thing. Okay, that may still not be that clear. What that means, what a version is, is it means it's the same as something. It's another, uh, it's another copy of some story um, or some thing. Um, but it has improvements or it has changes in it. They may be improvements, they may not. So for example, let's take the iPhone. The iPhone, there's at, at minimum about what I guess 
six versions? I don't know. Was there an iPhone 2 or did it just jump to three? Um, but th but each one of those is a version of the iPhone. All of them are the, the same. They're, they're, they're iPhones, but there's been some changes made. Sometimes the changes make it better. Sometimes, you know, the changes may not make it better. So, for example, I don't know if anybody has the iPhone 5C, um, but my son has that one, and I had the iPhone 5S, and even though the C came after the S, it was not as good. It had problems with it. So a version doesn't always have to be better, but it means that it's mostly the same as something else, but there's been some changes. There's been some changes to it. Um, we often talk about versions with, um, with stories. You know, um, so for example, the story of Frankenstein um, is a story that's been told um, again and again and again, um, but they've been uh, with uh, different people in that. Um, if you like the British TV show Doctor Who, there's been lots of different versions of of that. Um, another famous one is um, who's it? Uh, James Bond, right? There's lots of versions of James Bond. It's the same character, but there's been different actors playing that. Um, if you like Mad Max, that's a recent movie. There was an older version and then a, a newer version. Um, it's the same story or the same character, but it's a different, there's been some changes to it, which may make it better or may make it worse, depending on your opinion. Okay, so that's it. So what you want to do is, is do the online activities for that, and we'll, um, we'll do some work in class uh, with these words before we take the test. All right, take care. Bye.